Oh, oh, my, 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 it just, it jumped into my mouth. I know, I know. I was going to stop smoking. My name is Ann. What's your name? Watch your shadow in the mirror. Right behind her. I was going to light it up right in there. Okay. Yeah. We're rolling. A couple of just... three of them. Okay, go. All right. Nanny, we're going to do the Georgia Cop, the Cop Mill Girls. Hard times in this old mill. Hard times in this old mill, Brookside. Oh. Why don't you sing your song? Why don't you help me? We'll help you. Well, okay, go ahead. Well, you have to start it. Whoa. Okay, we'll, we'll Went get Went down some. Brookside Mill to get me a job away down yonder in a cotton mill yard. Hard times in this old mill, hard times I know. Went to the fence, I peeped to the crack, old Tom Turner said you better go back. Hard times in this old mill, hard times I know. Been a working in a cotton mill all of my life. I ain't got enough to buy me a barlow knife. Hard times in this old mill. Hard times I know. That's all I know of that. Uh, I lost really, out on the other. That's a real good one. Could you sing uh, uh, When the Work is Inspiration? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, like that's that. That's Nanny's favorite. Okay.
can bring to birth a new world. From the ashes of the
how you doing? I want you to tell me, uh, first of all, I, my, my family is um, textile, and all of my family now yeah. works in the mill today and under very modern technology and supervised and everything. Why don't you tell me a little bit about the time that you worked in the plant, in the mills? Oh, oh. you mean uh, when I first went to work? Yes, yeah, start back when. How old were you when you first started? About eight years eight. old. Well, start, eight. if you can remember, at seven or eight, start back in, in seven, Rome, eight. Georgia. I Rome? Went, I went to the superintendent's mm -hmm. office and asked him for a job. At school? Ma'am. You mean the superintendent's office? You mean at school or? Uh, cotton mill. Cotton mill, okay. And he said, you look mighty little to be a, wanting a job. I said, yeah, but I can learn. He looked at me, you know, and he said, you're little. But says, I'll tell you what to do. You come to work in the morning. I says, well, tell me what you're going to pay me mm. an hour. He says, a penny. A penny. Twelve cents a day, mm. 12 hours to learn to spin. Now, was it your choice? Was it, were you compelled to go to work yourself, or was it because of your family, or... Ex explain why at the age of eight you wanted to go to work into the mills. Well, uh, there, there wasn't any school around there that uh, I knew about of my mother, and we had no school. Mm -hmm. Of course, the company had a bathing pool for the people in the cut mill. That was unusual, you mm -hmm. know, for them. But there wasn't no school, and... I lived the same way in Douglasville. There wasn't any school there. Now, how far was Douglasville from? It's uh, Douglasville is, uh, uh, I guess, about 40 miles from here. Mm -hmm. You know, this side of Villa Ricker. Okay. Ask her how she learned to read. Okay. Now, how did you learn to read? You know what I mean? At the age of eight, seven or eight, you went to work in the mill. You said there was no school. How did you learn... Uh, I mean, didn't know how to read in Rome, read. Georgia, but uh, we we moved away from there to uh, Co College Park, and I w was in the my folks worked at Gate City Cotton mm -hmm. Mill there, and what happened? My I, I got a letter from my boyfriend. He wasn't my boyfriend. He was just a friend to his sister. We was. Buddies in the cotton uh -huh. mill, you know, and very nice person, family. And uh, what happened uh, concerning uh, this letter, I asked my mother to read it for me. I didn't know how to read. Mm -hmm. And so she said, you go out there under that oak tree and, and read that letter for yourself. Learn, and if you don't know how, you can learn. I went out there. That set me afire. I said, I got to learn to myself, right. you know. I got to learn to to read and write. And I went to learning and studying. So you, when you say you went to learning, you did it on your own, did you? How yeah, did you? on my own. And uh, when I was going to school in Douglas County, I didn't get any education there because the teacher, uh, she spent all of her time with the shirt. With the, you know, with the sharecroppers uh, on the land, mm -hmm. you know, sharecroppers, landlord. No, to start off with, she spent all her time with the owners. Yeah. And she didn't do anything for the sharecroppers. Start again and tell that story. Okay. Uh, see, the sharecroppers, they had, they didn't have a chance. And so what happened, she... She, the teachers didn't do anything for us, as far as... Did you have books? Did the teacher give you books, the sharecroppers, children? The the, te the school? Yeah, so when were you separated in the I don't the, even the remember a book. You don't remember a book? Not a book. But uh, they, prob they had books there at the school. But these teachers boarded with the... Sh sh Sharecoppers, landlord, mm -hmm. the landlord, you know. The owners, right. Uh huh. And she spent all of her time concerning that with, with the, you know, with the child's. That was a child's own lot of land. 
In fact, we was living on their land, my father and mother and all of us. Mm -hmm. All of us, how many you had? A lot of sisters and brothers, or was it just you? Well, I had not, I had uh, six brothers, and, and I had uh, four, three sisters. Were they able to go to school as well? They, they was, some of them married. Mm-hmm. Okay, you... Uh, no, I haven't told her. Uh, these these Broadwaters, one, one of them was my sister-in-law, you know. Mm -hmm. She had helped me, and she had helped me learn to play the piano. What little, you know, I learned. This is while you was working in the plant? I, that's when I was working in Rome, Georgia. Okay. But where did we go from here? Okay, now we're going to move around here, move the camera. I just. Okay. <laughs> I don't know about this stuff, so you have to tell me. Really? Okay. okay. No. When you were a child, Nanny, explain to me or tell me about did you ever get an opportunity to go to the mills to see what was happening or um, were people from off the street invited to come in. It's not like today. Today, you can't go into the mill unless you work there. How? Right. Explain to me about... Well, uh, you see, sometimes my sisters would be worn out. They're so tired, and they'd sleep too late to go to work mm -hmm. on time. And when that whistle blows, you know, you better be there. Well... They wouldn't have time for their breakfast, so that'd throw. I was on one. They'd uh, my mother would send me to take their lunch, take their breakfast to them, mm -hmm. and that's uh, what I did at the Elizabeth Cotton Mill. Now that cotton mill sold out and turned to be a martel later. Uh, I was working in that. Martell Mill when I got met my children's daddy. Mm -hmm. Well, anyhow, I'd have to go over a bridge, and it'd make me so nervous, you know, to go over a bridge. There's a big creek mm -hmm. to the cotton mill. There's two rows of houses, the village. And my mother, she had... Uh, one dear friend uh, that uh, was caught in the trap over to the over in Clark's Cove. Mm -hmm. That's in East Point. There's killed and hanging Afro-Americans, and so this one got away and you know come to my mother's. She had to come about a half a mile or more to get to my mother's. She knew my mother, mm -hmm. and she stayed there. But I'd go back, you see, when I was in the, taking the lunch for the my sisters, I watched every way they worked on the machine. Mm -hmm. And she, my oldest sister, was slow, you know, and I could learn easy. I learned to, you know, to do the kind of work she is a youth, you know, doing spooling, spooling mm -hmm. in a cotton mill. I know spooling. Well, anyhow, that was some bad times, you know, long then. Well, they was broke out that right out in, in Clark's Cove and East Point, between East Point and where we live. And they called every, every person on the village, Cotton Mill Village, to come, that have to come in the Cotton mm -hmm. Mill that night. And so that night, we all had to go in the Cotton Mill. Children, babies, and everybody had to get out of them houses. They told us that the black folks was coming in there and kill us all. They told you that? 
They told the people that. And was there a reason why they would tell you that the black people were coming to kill everyone? On account of slavery. Uh, they want to keep white people under slavery, cotton mill people. But they couldn't keep them as bad as they had the Afro-Americans. Mm -hmm. So this woman come by there, and and as I said, she, my mother hid her in a closet. Oh, she did. When the man come by and told everybody had to come in the cotton mill, we went and stayed down there nearly all night. And so we come home in time for them to cook the breakfast of the workers so they could get back on the job at six o'clock. Mm. That was the. Uh, that was during a race route. Now, they was a hanging, they was a murder, and all of that, Afro-Americans over in Clark's Cove. That ain't no joke. That was true. Now, I wonder if you could ask Annie how she got arrested during the strike of 1934. Okay. Tell us that story. Well, well... Uh, yeah. Um, tell me the story about how you got arrested during the 1934 strike, Annie. Well, I'll tell you. I'll try to make it as snappy as possible. <laughs> you know, uh, I was on starvation. I had five children. And I lived across from Capitol Avenue in a little shack, you know. And uh, I... That was during... The union is going on then. And so my children didn't have nothing to eat. And I had no money. And there's a WPA days, you know, then. And then uh, uh, I got them to go over to Capitol Avenue where m my mother was mm -hmm. living so they could get them something to eat. And so when uh, uh, they left, I went on to the social worker and asked her and told her what a shape, you know, I was in. Didn't have no bread, no sugar, no, no coffee, no, no nothing. And that was the truth. And I asked her and told her I needed some help bad. And she listened at me for a few minutes and she then I, Offered me 50 cents. 50 cents? 50 cents now. Five children. Okay. 50 cents. I said, 50 cents, lady, won't buy nothing. I said, that wouldn't buy groceries for even one. And uh, she wouldn't give in no more. And so I just said, you keep that 50 cents. Good. And I went and caught me a bus and went out on the picket line. But I first stopped at a man's house, and he he told me he was going to the to picket that day. And I told him I'd come by there, and we he you know could show me, which I already know. Mm -hmm. And. So I, when I got off and went to his house for about five minutes, he he wasn't the the, the feller that you could think about. He wasn't going no picket line. He just lied to me. Oh, he lied to you. And I happened to have a daily worker in my bosom, and I carried it. I thought of my give him a little education by mm -hmm. reading it to him, you know. But I seen I was with the wrong place and the wrong man, that he wasn't no union man. So how did you get away from him? I, I told him I had to go on to the picket line, mm -hmm. and uh, he, he said, well, I'll be over there directly. But I knew better than to let him see the daily worker you see into it. Mm -hmm. Because you got to know how to trust people concerning as bad as it was then 
you know, a daily worker. You know what I mean by a daily worker? No, explain the daily worker to me. A exactly. daily worker is a communist paper. Yeah. That's a communist paper. Mm-hmm. So you had to be very careful as to... You have to be very careful, Mm -hmm. and we were... I wasn't in in the right shape to even let a union person that didn't know me, you know, know, see the paper. Mm -hmm. But I thought this man, he had had me food, you know. I had a little confidence in him. Thought he was a good union man. Mm -hmm. But... I went ahead, and it wasn't, uh, when I got on the picket line and was picketing, it wasn't very long until I asked a lady, could I go to the bathroom, her house. She is, a, you know, picketing. And they was, it broke up. The meeting broke up about 10 mm-hmm. o'clock, picketing. And so she said, I'd be glad for you to. And her and her husband and I went on to her house. And then I come back, and while I was coming back to catch my bus, the the police has got me. What do you mean got you? Did they grab you? Rested me. Rested mm-hmm. me and put me in the wagon and she put me in the... I don't remember whether it's a car or a wagon, but I think it's a car then. And did they hurt you when they put you in the wagon? Well, when they grab you, most all of them will hurt your arm. I had, I've had i been hurt in Alabama and Tuscaloosa and all over the country, you know, uh, being so rough. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've, uh, I've had, had to almost go to a doctor with my mm-hmm. arm and... Uh, in uh, Alabama. So what happened after they got you on the wagon, after they put you on the wagon? They put me in, put me, my sister was out there picketing too, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was a little late because I was uh, trying to take care of uh, getting some food for my children. Right. Well, they they put me in jail. They give me a female examination. Now, you can't believe this. Explain the examination. A female examination. They didn't take your clothes off or anything. They just roughed I, you down a bit, right? They they almost took them off oh, they and did. give me an examination. Now, you know what they done that for? No. Why? Well, I had a daily worker. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I had a daily worker. My okay, bosom, okay. Bosom. Now I get it. Okay. You got it, eh? Yeah. So they they arrested the, uh, she and I, and they accused us of... Uh, you mean your sister? You mean my she, sister okay. and I. Mm-hmm. Annie Mae Leathers, she is a Leathers in. Mm-hmm. They arrested us both and put us in the... Uh, uh, Big Rock Jail down here on Butler Street. And then they give us an examination, you know, female. What about that? Mm, I guess they thought we had a spy rack. Did they find a newspaper? No, I I had it in my bosom. Oh, okay. They they was welcome to Mm -hmm. (laughs) find it quick. So we went on and was accused with insurrection trying to overthrow the government of the United States. How long did you stay in jail? Seventy-four days before we could get out on bond. And we got two Afro-American. You've heard of Benjamin Jr. Davis, have you? I don't believe I have. That was the one, a wonderful lawyer and... Uh, Mr. John Gear, that was our lawyers. So how did you come apart? How did you obtain the lawyers? Did someone, did they come in to just represent you or did someone in your family call these attorneys, these Afro-American attorneys? Explain that to me. Well, uh, some, uh, they already know this in the newspaper, Mm -hmm. you know. And I I don't remember about my people, but I they, they would tell them, you know, the lawyers that my 
My mother and uh, brothers and sisters know uh, Mr. Okay. Gear and Mr. Davis. So uh, we had a time. Now, I remember my son that's uh, a handicap, you know, he's blind and deaf. Mm -hmm. he, he can remember things so wonderful. Uh, I'm proud of that. Mm -hmm. He said I talked about three hours <laughs> on the stand. Uh, you know what I was doing, giving, a, giving them a good outline yeah. on this country mm -hmm. and what they're doing and what they've done for the blacks. See, well, the you... black didn't have no freedom at all, practically done mm -hmm. then, then. You know that. I don't? know that. Okay, what would you like to do next? Well, wait a minute, sorry, sorry, sorry. What would you like? The, sorry, that was my mistake. I tell you. Just, just a moment. You mean political? Yeah, just a moment. You mean, uh -oh. 15 more seconds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 15 more. A lot no, of... Uh, uh, oh, oh. Oh. We have to wait for this machinery to warm up. Uh -huh. I ain't even got the fan on. <laughs> not because I'm stingy, it's because I just have turned it on. Okay, now tell me what you'd like to do next. I don't, I don't know what to pick. I would like to see a lot of things changed, conditions and so forth. I'd like to see plenty of changes. There's so many things needed to be done. Now, when I was over here before, you were talking about religion. Could you talk about religion a little? I can talk about it, but I don't want to hurt you. Okay. No, none of these other young, none of them. Now, I don't believe in no religion. I joined the church was baptized, I thought it might help me make a living. <laughs> For my children, five children is hard to feed and clothe and shelter. I, I'm not, I, I've not, uh, I won't fall out with nobody that is religious, but they can't carry it on around me. Because I, I just don't care for it. I was raised up in a religious parent. My daddy was a fanatic on religion. My mother used to sing in the choir out in Douglas County and her sister. But I'm not religious and I'm not ashamed of it. And when I die, I don't want no religious funeral and have people a whinling and a crying around. I don't care for that. Now, it turn people against me to talk that, but that's in my heart. And I'm expecting Christ, if there is one, to come down here and do something for this for the people uh, up, come out of the ground, wherever he's at. <laughs> I'm not religious. Could you talk about music? Music? Yeah. Oh, I love music. I'm crazy about music. I, I think music's a great thing. It is really wonderful. Did you ever use music to help organize? Well, I didn't have no, I didn't have no music to bring in. I mean, for the people that come in my house, but I've had this room full, and coming way over here of people.
from New York, you know, black and white. Do you recall any of the songs that you used to sing? Me? Well, I got plenty of books on them. What kind of song you like? Well, uh, I like some songs that uh, Pete Seeger used to sing. Oh, he's my man. Oh, oh. <laughs> Pete Seeger. What's the matter with him? Is he still playing? Where, where at? He's in New York, yes. I'll Is be, he? I never I, get him on the radio. He was on the radio last night. Tell me how to get him. I'll send you a cassette of his stuff. Do you have a Do you have a player? Yes. I'll send you a cassette. I guess it's sitting right there. Yeah. And my son has one, too. Pete, I uh, had uh, dinner with Pete last Monday night. You don't mean... That's right. Well, I want you to, I met Pete, I'll tell you, I'm glad this come up. You see, when we went to, when me and my husband went to Stockholm, Sweden, uh, I had a lot of company out in New York that come, you know, to see us and talk to us before we went, because it's a hard time then to get a passport. And did you know anybody by the name of Betty Hafrick? Hafrick, Hafrick. Her husband worked for some big studio, great studio. And she come to Atlanta to, for us to go to Stockholm to see if we'd go to Stockholm, Sweden. That was for Dr. King everywhere. And we went to Stockholm, Sweden, and met a lot of people, Indian people, and met people from uh, over in, uh, I mean, the Indian people. And they was uh, some, uh, at that big conference, I've got a record of it, at that big conference, uh, World Peace Council meeting, it was wonderful. And there was some Chinese people that wanted to to meet us. And so they asked, and would we meet with the Chinese people? And we told them we'd feel honored to. That's when Walter was living. Walter was my husband's name then. So we met these two people that it after we come back from Stockholm, Sweden, it wasn't very long till them two men was in uh, in the capital or what do you call it? The not the legislature. What is it? The, in in Sweden? Huh? The capital in Sweden? No, in in this country. Oh, uh, and uh, I was thrilled. The Congress, uh, Senate. Yes, yeah. said it. Yeah. They was lovely people. Well, now... But that hurt me when they come up and ask me in China hmm. and Walter, would you, a woman, would you would you accept to, to talk to the Chinese, you know, big shot? Hmm. Love me. That's the sweetest place I was ever in. The little children's even taught, taught how to watch after the elderly people, and, you know, to keep them from falling. You know, if you don't get a lot of calcium, you'll fall, you, you know, without calcium. Yeah, I've had a really wonderful life, but Pete Seeger's what got me. He used to sing over the radio. Is he strong now? Yes. Oh, wonder if you'll ever see him. I will, sure. Give him my love and a big hug. Tell him, I, does he remember Nanny Lear Washburn? I'll do that. Now, could you sing any of the un old Union songs? Me? Yes. I got the books. 
when the union aspirations slay. Oh, I believe, let that little light shine, 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 shine. I don't know that, I can't. When the union aspiration through the workers' blood shall run, there can be no power greater beneath the sun. Yet what force on earth is weaker than the feeble strength of one? For the union makes us strong. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. For the union makes us strong. used to could sing, but not no more. You do all right. Want me to go play it on the piano? Yes, sure. <laughs> okay. Shot. Don't, don't. Then I'll play for you. Oh! 
everybody play. Y'all want to play some more? That's great. That's wonderful. Well, I done played a union song, and I ain't going to study war no more. You know what that means, don't you? I taught my children to not go. You know what my son done, the one that died? I told him to not be a fool and go and fight the capitalist war. If they come over here, it would, it might be different with people. And I said, William, don't you go to no war for no rich people. Just like it's going on now, you know, the drugs, they could stop that drug business from being brought up with you, couldn't they? I believe they could. Well, anyhow, I told William, I says, William, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't be big enough food to go to the war. And so they wasn't too long till they called him. They called him and he had to go and be examined for a walk, you know, to see if he'd pass. So, William, we done talked it over about, you know, not go to no more. Well, anyhow, the doctor, he <laughs> William said, Doctor, I've got to have a drink. <laughs> I've got to have a drink. I can't, you can't hear nothing hardly. And that liquor kind of makes my, my hearing better. <laughs> he said, what do you mean? He said, I just got to have a drink. He didn't, he didn't even touch him again. That's pretty good, isn't it? It's not have to go to a war and fight and kill innocent people over there. Or oh, anywhere. I'm John Brown if I'd do it. Mm -mm. I, I, I wouldn't fight okay. wars. That's, that's good. Thank you.